Hey guys, Chris from Adapt to Vision here, and this is video number two in my ratio analysis series. If you want to see the other videos in this series, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Now, before we jump into the material, just a couple of things. One, this video is directed mainly at students who will be doing CSEC POE. So if there are students who are doing other syllabuses, this material should still be helpful to you. But I want you to bear in mind that you may have subtle differences on your syllabus that you should be very much aware of. Subtle, maybe even in the formulas for the ratios. So please be mindful of that. And the other thing is just a little brief intro or discussion of what ratio analysis is. So as accountants and analysts, we use ratios to assess the performance of business entities in different areas. So just like when you guys do tests in school in your various subjects and you get back your results, your results are usually in ratio format, either in a percentage format, which is a ratio out of 100. Out of every 100 marks available, how much did you get? What proportion of each 100 marks did you get? And of course, the greater the percentage, the more marks out of every 100 for you and the better your performance. Or you may have gotten, let's say, a fraction. You may have gotten 25 out of 30, 45 out of 50, whatever it is. That's still a ratio, right? It comes from the mathematical term, a rational number. The ratio of one number, the numerator, to the denominator. And it tells you the proportion of the total number of marks available that you got. So, of course, again, the higher the, the, the ratio is the better performance for you. Now, of course... We assess performance as well. If your performance is, is going down, if those ratios that keep coming back, those percentages or fractions keep going down, then you need to ask yourself, well, what am I doing wrong? And how can I fix it? Right? Or if your marks are going up, you might be like, well, what am I doing right? And can I sustain it? And can I use, use whatever method I'm using in this particular subject area in other subject areas? So businesses do basically the same thing. So they have different areas. We discussed profitability in a previous video. In this video, we're going to discuss liquidity. There are also efficiency or activity ratios, solvency or debt ratios. And there are also what I like to call shareholder ratios, which are actually kind of like profitability part two ratios, right? So businesses look at the values of these ratios over time. We need to compare ratios to other things. For example, targets we may have set for ourselves, past performance, competitors performance, industry performance, a ratio by itself means very little. It doesn't allow us to do much analysis. All we could do is talk about what the actual ratio means and maybe suggest some ways to improve it. And at the CSEC level, that's kind of what you want. You want, there's a very superficial analysis that takes place. It's not very in-depth. But as we go on, and hopefully one day I'll do that, that CAPE accounting series on ratio analysis, we'll go a bit more in-depth. Anyway, guys, I want to get into the material today. So if you have any questions at all about what I've discussed just now, please leave it in the comment section below. But now, on to the content. Right, so as I said, we're discussing liquidity today. So what does liquidity mean? How wet something is? No, not that kind of liquid. In this context, liquidity refers to the firm's ability to honor its short-term obligations using its short-term assets. So that's a fancy way of saying, in other words, this is a measure of how well the company can repay its current liabilities with its current assets, right? So, of course, you're seeing some new words here, obligations and blah, 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 right? That's just basically a synonym for liabilities, right? So, some additional notes here. It is considered important for a firm to be liquid. Otherwise, it would have to sell its non-current assets to generate the money necessary to honor its current liabilities. So, think about it. If Let's think about our current assets. Stock, debt, as bank, and cash maybe prepaid um, expenses, etc. But stock that is bank and cash. Now, if we don't have enough money to pay our current liabilities, what's going to happen? Well, at one, either we get charged extra interest on top of the debts we already owe, which makes it that we have to pay more money when we repay our liabilities. Or two, our lines of credit dry up. What I mean by lines of credit is when we purchase, we could purchase on credit. And that entity who is selling to us on credit is taking a risk that we may not repay them. And if we don't repay them or repay them on time, they may decide, hey, what? Well, it's not worth the risk lending you money, extending you credit. So if our lines of credit dry up, what's going to have to happen? We're going to have to make all our purchases for cash, which could be difficult to do. Or we may face going out of business if we can't get stock to sell. So if our current assets are insufficient to repay our current liabilities, guess what's going to have to happen? Either you're going to have to borrow money in the form of a loan from some sort of financial institution to repay your current liabilities, so you're borrowing to pay back, which is a dangerous cycle unless it's properly managed, or you're going to have to sell off your non-current assets. So could you imagine that? Could you imagine having to sell your equipment, your, maybe your computer equipment, your furniture, your vehicles, maybe even the property you use to pay back your liabilities, your current liabilities on top of that? 
That's not a good precedent because now if you don't have the equipment, if you don't have a location, how are you going to conduct business? How are you going to earn money going forward? So that's a, that's a dangerous cycle. So you have to be very, very careful of that, right? So you don't want to sell your non-current assets because that could significantly curtail the ability of the entity to earn. And that is basically, you're heading down a very dangerous road looking to end up in liquidation where you sell off all your assets and just pay off all the liabilities and stop functioning as a business. So ideally, you don't want to do that. You want to continue operating for as long as possible because you want to make as much money as possible and be as, well, I guess as successful as possible, as fulfilled as possible. So management of liquidity is extremely important to an entity's well-being and survival. So at this level, there are two liquidity levels that we use. We use the current ratio and the asset test or quick ratio. Now, I've also seen in some texts and some notes from other students, the networking capital or working capital being included. Now, networking capital is not a ratio. Networking capital is current assets minus current liabilities, which is a difference. A ratio is a comparison of proportions. It's the division. If, if you're not dividing, there's no ratio, <laughs> okay? But again, you could use networking capital as part of your discussion, right? Just be mindful, it's not a ratio. Now, there's also another little piece of note here. It says, at higher levels of accounting education, there are alternative formula for the quick ratio. Please bear this in mind if you go on to do accounting past this level, right? So over the years, I have seen different formulae appearing for the quick ratio. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so let's take a look at the current ratio, shall we? Okay, so the current ratio, the formula is current assets divided by current liabilities expressed as X to 1. Now, actually, we could take off that dollar sign, right? We could just put as X to 1, right? So as you can see, it actually is in a ratio format with that colon symbol there. Now, this shows how many dollars worth of current assets are available to repay each dollar of current liabilities, right? It literally shows that X dollars, X to 1. Now, imagine you had, again, think of it like a, like, like a pizza. So let's say your current assets is the pizza and the number of people to share the pizza between or among, that's your liability, those are your creditors. So let's say you have eight slices of pizza and two people, well, everybody gets four slices. So, I mean, that would, that would make me happy. I don't know about you, maybe you could eat a whole pizza, I don't know. We're talking, we're talking deep dish or thin crust. Anyway, sorry, that's a whole different set of metaphors. But anyhow, but if you have eight slices and you have eight people, everybody gets one. People may still be a bit hungry, but everybody got one. But if you have eight slices and 16 people, now you're gonna to have to cut your slices in half. People not getting a whole slice and they're still gonna be hungry. So that might be a problem. So ideally, we want this ratio to definitely be above one to one. We want it maybe to be even when you're 1.5 to one, two to one. But please note, there is no one right or optimal value for this ratio. It depends on the industry that the entity is in. It may depend on the time of year, the seasonality. The fluctuations in business activity may lead to certain low values of current ratios being acceptable for a specific period of time. And as you go past that, maybe like for example, in Christmas time, usually consumer demand rises then and businesses would have more liquidity. And maybe even just before that, in the September, October period, after people have just gone on July, August vacation or, or paid for school books, they might not have much money left and, and therefore spending, spending might drop. We don't know, right? It depends on the economy, all sorts of things. But anyhow, I'm getting a bit too far here, right? But the point I want to drive home is that there's no one right value. There's no one right range for this ratio, okay? But just be mindful of that because I know teachers tend to tell students these things but there are a lot of factors involved in assessing optimal and optimal value for ratios. Anyhow, let's take a look at the example because again, at this level, the calculation and brief superficial explanation are what are important. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're taking a look at Bing Nap Ding Bat, statement of financial position. So we have current assets, inventory, account receivable, net, cash at bank, cash at hand for a total of $65,000. Current liabilities now, we have accrued expenses, prepaid revenue, accounts payable for a total of 50,000. Now, how do we calculate the current ratio? We simply take the value of total current assets and divide by the value of total current liabilities. So we have 65 over 50, which is 1.3 to one. So what this means is that the above calculation shows there is a dollar and 30 cents of current assets available to pay off every dollar of current liabilities. So like it's, it's like if you had a slice of pizza and if you did a division, there were 1.3 slices of pizza per person. So everybody got a slice and a little bit more. So you were good. 
All right, so that means the business is relatively liquid. We have enough money from our current assets to pay off our current liabilities comfortably and still have a little left over. All right, so I'm going to give you guys now, so let's scroll across and see Splugugi tax. So we're seeing Splugugi tax, we're seeing current assets, right? Same four current assets, different total, of course, because I mean, we can't put the same exact figures. Current liabilities, same line items, but different figure. So I want you guys just pause, just take a read again, calculate the current ratio, and let's go from there. Okay, how did it go? So we're going to take 112, 112,000, come the man, zero, be the self, right? Divided by 75,000, whoops, one, two, three. And that's going to give us 1.49 to one. Now I know when you guys did a division, you probably got 1.493333 recurring infinitely. So because it's dollars and cents, you guys are allowed to round off to the nearest cent. You don't want to get too many decimal places. It, would, it wouldn't be very meaningful, all right? So this company, Spagui Tax now, has a bit more money, almost 20 cents extra, right, of current assets per every dollar of current liability relative to Big Nap Dingbat. So again, remember, we use ratios to assess the performance of an entity. But to assess it, we have to compare it to something else. What are we comparing here? In this case, two separate entities. Now, the question is, is the, is the comparison meaningful? Right? Suppose the Google tax has been around for decades and Big Nap Dingbat just started this month. Is that comparison meaningful? Maybe, maybe not. I don't think so because we're comparing maybe two even different size entities. Are they in the same industry? Do they even follow the same rules? So we have a lot of information that need, we need to add context. But again, at this level, we're just trying to keep it simple and straightforward. So we would say that Google Tax has a better liquidity position than Bing Nap Dingbat because of the current ratio. It has a better current ratio of 1.49 to 1 than Bing Nap Dingbat at 1.3 to 1. Okay. All right. So, and again, that means that at the first Plaguigi tax, we have a dollar and 49 cents of current assets to pay off every dollar of current liabilities. So it seems to be relatively safe. All right. Let's take a look at the quick ratio. Okay. So this is called the asset test or quick ratio. And its formula is current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. Again, giving an X to one uh, uh, ratio as the output, right? Now, question is why are we subtracting inventory inventory is the least liquid current asset it is never bound to be sold so you could be stuck with inventory on hand and still have your creditors to pay for example like now in these COVID-19 times a lot of businesses are not able to operate people cannot in some cases some places there are lockdowns like in Trinidad right now we're in June early June 2021 and businesses, certain business cannot operate. So they have stock, they're sitting down in the store, in the warehouse that they can't sell. But their creditors may still want their money. So guess what? What's left? Your debtors, your bank, and your cash. So it's almost like a kind of worst case scenario or, or extreme situation that you're kind of testing here. Or, or as most textbooks say, it's a more stringent test of liquidity. So <laughs> in that case, right? Um, and also before I go on, Again, like I said, there are different variations on this formula. I've seen one that says cash plus bank plus short-term investments divided by current liabilities. Now, for CSEC POA, this formula is sufficient. All right. For anybody else, uh, if you guys are using a different formula for the quick ratio, I want you to leave it down in the comment section below and we can discuss it a little bit or at least it'll provide a bit of exposure to, 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 for everybody here to see that there are variations in this ratio. All right, so again, there's also no one right value or one optimal range. We would prefer for this to be for at the very least one to one, so you could pay off all of your current liabilities and still kind of have your stock left over. But again, it depends on the industry, the time of year, the, the state of the economy, etc., etc. Certain ratio, certain values for the ratio may be acceptable at certain points in time and in certain industries. But again, that's going a bit too far for the CSEC level, but I think it's th I think those are things you all should be aware of, all right? And I know it's just kind of talking up in the air and I'm not giving concrete examples, so I do apologize, but let's take a look at the calculation, shall we? Okay, so again, big nap thing bad. So I brought back the same exact um, statement of financial position. So we're gonna take the current assets and subtract the inventory and then divide that by the current liabilities. So we're seeing that here, 65 minus 10 is 55. 55 divided by 50 is 1.1 to 1. So that means that there is a dollar and 10 cents of current assets, excluding inventory, available to pay off every dollar of current liabilities. So let's pull up Spagui Tax Incorporated now, and I want to give you guys a chance to calculate 
the sorry well this should this should I'm just realizing this says current ratio this should say quick ratio <coughs> quick ratio or acid test ratio right let's use quick because it's quicker to write that one <laughs> okay so take a pause take a read do your calculations let's unpause okay how did it go wasn't so bad right so we're gonna do 112,000 subtract 20,000 divided by 75,000. All right, and that value is approximately 1.23 to one. So they have a dollar and 23 cents of current assets, excluding stock available to pay off every dollar of current liabilities, right? So again, comparison, Spluguigi Tax Incorporated seems to be more liquid than Big Nap Dingbat because of the value of its quick ratio relative to Big Nap Dingbat. All right, and again, it's, it's, it's um, what you call it? <laughs> it's a consistent result with what we saw just now. Now, that's not always going to be the case. Suppose uh, the Google tax had more money tied up in inventory. So, for example, let's switch some figures, right? So, let's say this was um, 60,000, right? So, I'm going to have to find, let's put a, let's pull a 10 there. That's 20. Uh, let's pull a 10 there. So, let's double check. 670, 95. 95 and 17 is 105. Yeah, okay, cool. So if we did that and we change this figure now to 60, minus 60, right? So 112 minus 60 would give us all right, 0.69 to 1. So that means that they have 70, just less than 70 cents of current assets to pay off every dollar of current liabilities, which means that they cannot pay off their current liabilities with their current assets. And it actually kind of reverses the picture now. It actually puts Big Nap Dimbat in a more favorable light relative to Spluguggy Tax. So what we're seeing there is that Big Nap, sorry, Spluguggy Tax seems to have a lot of its current asset value tied up in stock, which could be a dangerous thing, especially given, like, for example, now in COVID times, the low level of economic activity. So why does it have so much stock? Again, we don't know the whole context behind the, the companies or the entities in this, in this question, but that's a double-edged sword. So one, the disadvantage is we don't know exactly what to say. The advantage, therefore, is, is two, we can make up stuff that makes sense. Don't make up stuff that doesn't make sense, please, all right? Don't just go and invent all sorts of random situations that don't actually add value to your analysis, okay? So here, right, in this particular situation, now we can say that Bing Nap Ding Bat is more liquid or appears more liquid than Spugui Tax based on the values of their quick ratios, 1.1 to 1 versus 0.69 to 1 respectively. Okay. Okay, guys, so there you have it. Those are the liquidity ratios you need to know for the CSEC level and apparently for the CAPE level as well, right? Again, I would say don't forget there may be variations in the formula as you go higher on in accounting education. Different textbooks may have different variations for that quick ratio especially. Different teachers may have learned different things, so just be mindful of that. But again, remember what it is. The concept does not change. How capable is an entity of paying off or honoring its current liabilities, its short-term obligations, with its current assets, its short-term assets? And we want that entity to be liquid rather than illiquid because that's a whole dangerous spiral. Anyhow, so ladies and gents, again, if you have any comments, questions, queries, anything to add, put it in the comment section below. And if it's a good comment, I will pin it. So if you guys want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know every time I release a new video. Also, check out my website. So we have some free payaway handles for you guys there. And as per usual, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Bye.